out, Harrison. Hello, All Star. <laughs> Hello, All Star clients, and welcome to the first the episode of the Veterinary Roundtable presented by All Star Veterinary Clinic in 2022. Oh, wow. This is what we do. Okay, no for our new listeners, let's break down the format of the Veterinary Roundtable. First, we will run through housekeeping, which is essentially updates about the podcast, our content, and anything we think should be on your radar. Second, we'll break the ice with a few icebreakers. Abby's excited. Regardless of how well we know the guests on each episode. Third, we'll jump into case collections. (laughs) I forgot to get a case. Where each of us will share an interesting case we recently encountered. (laughs) And lastly... (laughs) Client questions. Where we'll try our hardest to answer a question or concern from one of our clients. Okay, so before I introduce <laughs> our uh, guest, let's go over some quick housekeeping. On our uh, previous episode where we discussed why cats might scratch their mouths, we received a hilarious yet insightful comment from none other than Connie Bergeson that we'd like to read. Thanks, Connie. Now, I have to stop there and say that Connie Bergeson used to be a client here and has moved, but was Harrison's third grade teacher oh. at Our Lady of Grace. Isn't that so funny? So Bless cute. her. Little, and that's when we moved into Our Lady of Grace. She was the teacher that he moved into that classroom like in the middle of the year or something like that or the spring. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, she was amazing. Aww. Very funny person. And so she still follows us. Apparently so. That's cool. Okay. So she says, it's interesting that you mentioned cats and cleaning agents. If I clean with a bleach solution, Roxy acts like it's catnip, rolling in whatever I've cleaned. I have been concerned about it harming her. Also, grandparents planning next day meals while eating dinner. Grandparents don't want to cook anymore, and they're thinking, damn, I have to do this again tomorrow. So they are perusing what's left over and think and thinking how they can recycle it the next night. I go through the fridge and throw Whatever isn't moving yet into the crock pot. Merry Christmas. Mm. Well, I've never done that. Maybe. No. Mm. I'm going to try genius. that. That's mm-hmm. genius. Make it a soup. Make it a dip. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say also, one of the things that Mrs. Bergeson can do is cook. <clears throat> oh. She owned the little restaurant called Murphy's Table, named after her father, over on where that emergency <laughs> clinic is going right now. <laughs> it was it was a restaurant <laughs> called Murphy's Table, and she and her sister ran it, and they cooked. Oh, nice. And actually, this was after she retired from Our Lady of Grace, and actually, it was good. So you guys, she is welcome we might want to, to uh, consider doing this. Yes. Okay. Anyway. Wow. All right. Very insightful. People are great. Comment all you want. We love it. Yes. That's right. Please be nice. We have feelings. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you haven't sent us a question for the podcast, please do so. We want all of your questions. Feel free to message us, comment on our announcement video, or email Harrison at allstar all dash star vet dot com. Speaking of, shout out to Chelsea. For our first cat-related question regarding mouth lesions last week. Mouth Woo! lesions. Shout out. Woo! Yes. Chelsea. All right. Now on to our guests on this week's <laughs> oh. episode. Or this episode, yes, I should I say. I love this part. Course co-host. Always. Always. Dr. Duckwall. And we have with us two amazing all-star staff. Yep. Teammates. Yep. Extraordinaires. Nice. We have registered veterinary technician, Amber O'Malley. Woo! <laughs> Sitting next to her. Oh, you do. I can't snap. Oh. Mm. We'll discuss that later. <laughs> we have, as you can see with that comment, the most funny, mm-hmm. insightful, mm-hmm. Yep. keeping it real. Mm-hmm. Keeping us down to earth. Yeah. What else adjectives you've got? Oh, a joy, sunshine. Aww, a ray of sunshine ray in our life. Yeah. The Miss Abby DePew. Mm-hmm. Yes. Room assistant for Dr. Kristen Pulse. Yep. So, Until one of us steals her. That's right. So uh, <laughs> thanks, you guys, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Glad you're here. Glad yeah. to be here. You excited? Yeah. A little Calm, nervous, cool, but and collected. Glad I'm to be here. freaking pumped. Yeah. Good. My heart's beating really fast, uh-huh. but I look very calm on the outside. <laughs> do you have sweaty okay. palms? Because I do already. Yeah, my knees weak, arms are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's going to be fun. That's okay. okay. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> she never gets nervous about anything. <laughs> oh yes, I do absolutely. So one of the things we like to do with the episodes, just to loosen everybody up, to get you over your nerves, mm-hmm. your nerves, is we yeah. talk about icebreaker questions. So first question is New Year's resolutions for twenty twenty two. Hit me, Abby. Mine. Yep. Um, Let her roll. 
I've decided my New Year's resolution is to just try. And <laughs> that can, like, involve anything. Like, yeah. 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 try to put an effort to do your hair in the morning or, like, try to make a coffee at home instead of going to Starbucks. So that's okay. kind of yeah. what I'm it's all encompassing. It's perfect. Yeah. Try There's to so do your things. job. Oh wait, no. I didn't. <laughs> Try to do my job better. Try to <laughs> make somebody like that. cry. Yeah. I'm just no. That's a really good. That's a really yeah. good. Yeah. You know, outlook like a, mm-hmm. a to shoot for. You know yeah. what I mean? Like no, I'm not good at goals. It's terrifying. So if I can just try, I'll be good. I like it. I like it yeah. too. Thanks, I like it. Guys. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Amber? <laughs> Amber? <laughs> um, I made it a goal this year to, because sometimes it's hard not to let like the negatives get to you, mm-hmm. to like journal like Terry does, mm-hmm. nice. um, even if it's for like five minutes and just write down one positive thing that happened every day. At the end of the year, you'd have a whole book of positive mm-hmm. things. Have you started? Yes. Nice. That's the worst nice. part. I'm not going to yeah. start it. <laughs> You're not going to start? No, I'm not good at starting. <laughs> oh, okay. like, people are great that. at starting and then not finishing <laughs> yeah, them. So I would, that's yeah. I'd love to do that. Um, yeah. Okay, well, there's another idea for you. Yeah. I'll try to do that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, I haven't done any New Year's resolutions this year. Honestly, me either. Drink more water because I don't drink enough water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have anything great. You guys really, are so thinking. I Way probably to go. should like try to make an effort to get – like exercise and my heart mm-hmm. racing other than stress <laughs> <laughs> other than running from room to yeah, room we need yeah good, good stress <laughs> good stress not the bad stress the bad i really stuff. probably should i really really don't want to but i turned the big three zero this year so oh, it's time to really get that's just horrible 30 yeah. 30 and thriving that's you know right. what though i just turned 30 and i don't think i would want to be in my 20s again Listen, i don't feel like it, it was sucks. the best time of the, my life you know <laughs> 30 and 30 is like the, you know the new is like an, a six now you know you're 30 you're now six i feel like it's i like, finally found my like good spot in yeah. life okay so you have I something like to look it. forward okay. to look at that it's gonna 30. be right here there you go there you go I'm here to keep you motivated. Thank all. you. I, I yeah, I just didn't come up with any New Year's resolutions yet this year. Yeah, it's think never too late. Right you can do it anytime. Think of one right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't. <Okay. laughs> that was a good effort, though. I I, saw it. I was really trying hard. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite zoo animal, Amber? The giant panda. That's wow, oh. that was that's a, that was like that no was hesitating. Very quick. That was why the giant panda. I just one. I just think they're adorable. Um, but also, they could like, kill you. Look the size. I mean, seriously though, they protect. their those they care about. Yeah. So like, they're yeah. cute and they're clumsy and I just feel like they're the all encompassing teddy yeah. bear. Is a giant panda different from a normal panda? There's the red anything. panda, which uh, looks like a raccoon. Those are cute. Yeah, they are cute. Those are really cute. Do you know San Diego doesn't have giant pandas anymore? <laughs> And they've been gone for a long time. <laughs> okay. That's a really fun fact. I went to San Diego last fall and I went to the zoo, super excited to see the pandas. Mm-hmm. And then the nice helper man at his station was like, they're not here and they've been gone for a while. Oh. They went back to China. Are we yeah. sure? Because they- China there- owns every, ooh, fun fact. China owns every giant panda that's here in the United States. Of course they do. Yes. <laughs> so they I, took them away. That's right. They're like, yeah. no pandas for you. I made a trip to the National Zoo just to see pandas. That's all I cared about. I just wanted to see them. So there still are pandas in the United States. I think so. But that was a few years ago. So they haven't pulled knows? all the pandas. The pandas are gone, it's peeps. Nice man. No but more pandas. He couldn't even have pandas. Okay, Abby. I thought the question in the shower this morning when I was thinking about it was, <laughs> what zoo animal would you want to be? Oh. Oh, well, shoot. Great. Go for it. And I was thinking <laughs> penguin. Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> um, only because they've got it made. Like, they've a got penguin fish. does? Out yeah. of all the animals, a penguin has it I made? I feel like they have I a think lot they could get eaten pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the zoo. Well, I'm thinking about. Oh, so I'm specifically in a, in a zoo. If I was a zoo mm. animal living zoo in animal. the zoo, okay, penguin. Okay, that's fair. I think. I think if you're an animal living in the zoo, it does the a bird butter- that cannot fly. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Y'all, I'm not changing it. I like it. Oh uh, gosh, uh, <laughs> we love. And they Abby. just like walk around. Yeah, yeah they're pretty cute. Have you seen Happy Feet? Yeah. Is that animated? 
Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there wouldn't be light bigger. Oh, that's a bad yeah. question. I like <laughs> you're like. Yes, I've seen that movie. <laughs> Uh, no, they got live see. penguins at the zoo to dance on cue. On cue. <laughs> and in, then talk. In formation. <laughs> yeah, it's been yeah. a long day. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's been a long day. This is the end of the day. We What's always do this at animal? the end of the day. Yeah. Um, I was a real big fan of elephants, yeah. hippopotamuses, and giraffes. But always horses. Always horses. <laughs> they have horses at the zoo. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes they do. Penny I suppose Port you Wayne. go on like on a horse ride. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. My yeah. mom thought you could ride the giraffes at the zoo. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you can totally do that. And I think I'm like, you can. Sometimes no, you can't. feed them. You can ride the elephants. What? You can do on an elephant ride at the Indianapolis Zoo. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Yep. What's your zoo animal? Oh, gosh. You didn't think about it in the shower. I, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I there's so many different types of animals that I'm thinking. Oh gosh, what would I be? Not what would I be, but what animal is my favorite? <laughs> I know the same question. You can pick gosh. whichever. Um, I think any of the primates are cool. Mm. So, I probably would go with one of those guys. <laughs> I always like those guys. <laughs> the most human like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or really one of those swinging. like um those lizards that are the, the ones that are so big that Oh you know. Komodo dragon. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 There totally. was one just I'm born. totally gonna chase down someone. Like that's what they do. <laughs> they run so fast they can chase down people. Oh, you're talking as the Komodo dragon. Yeah. You're going to chase someone. Yeah. yeah. Or a tortoise yeah. lives to like a thousand years old. Yeah. So if you want to be a crusty old tortoise, that'd be a good option. Oh, uh, well, you There's know, no one time on the podcast, snap your you know what we should do half? in a podcast one time is like <laughs> assign zoo animals to every employee here. Yeah. Like, what, who they, what animal would they be? If Slide they were show a zoo and like just yeah. go through. Yeah. Because yeah. I think everyone would fit into some category. We have lots of good ideas for this podcast. Yes, we do. Hopefully, we have listeners up to the point. Somebody write it down. Harrison, write it down. He's supposed to be taking <laughs> notes. Harrison? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, next question. What is something you are great at cooking? <laughs> I'm going to answer Anything for Duck Anything I can put in a crock Let me answer for Duck Wall. <laughs> you're, you're taking Mrs. Ferguson's approach to everything in the... In the Shout Everything in, her, in the trash can. <laughs> um, I'm going to answer for Duckwall and say that she's going to say chicken Alfredo sauce in the ragu can. Yes. Hold on, but that's good. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes, yes All right. Abby. Also, All right. I would I like knew to we were comment friends. on the box potatoes. I grew up eating those and they are perfectly fine. These are my gals. <laughs> These are my gals. When you, you get a lot much. of crap for that on this podcast. Oh, no, I thought no, this. no, no, and no, Jack's no people. And pizza. No people, no. This is not. about that multiple times. Yeah, because uh, it's the best. I know that about you. That's weird. <laughs> and that you, like, I think you cry when you see old people. Is that right? Oh, we don't have I to go there. That. Oh, okay. Those are fun love facts it. to know about Dr. Duckwell. Dr. Duckwell's fun facts. She cries when she sees old people. I do. Loves ragu in a box. <laughs> Potato in a box and Jack's pizza. And she hates cooking. And she hates Can cooking. Can you tell? <laughs> okay. Uh, gosh. Abby, you're up. What's the question? What is yeah. something you are great at cooking? Oh. Mm, I don't know. I really like to do anything with like sausage, peppers, because that's fun. Mm. You can throw mm. all yeah. kinds of stuff in. Like in a pan? In a pan, if a, yeah. in a walk, if you will. Oh, a oh. walk. Can, well, yeah. Walk. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> walk. Or I've never used one. I was going to try to make a walk joke, but I couldn't think of one. It'll come to you. Walk this way. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, but you're getting ready to ask me, right? What yeah. Hey, is... what, what do you love to cook? Wait a minute. The, Did stop. you get box <gasps> mashed potatoes? There is chicken Alfredo. So mm-hmm. this is the thing. This what? is the thing that Duckwall and I argue about on the podcast. Can I is get this? did you make yes. me some chicken alfredo? Yes. Is my chicken baby? alfredo is it as good pot. as oh, so the wow jar? Wow, wow. I am so excited. Chicken alfredo sauce from Ragu. I am so hungry. Hopefully, it's still warm. I want you both to taste it. Warm. Try it. So 
So one's homemade and one's out of the box? No, they're both homemade. I just split it up so you could. So I can just eat this? Yeah, go for it. Try it. That's really good. You like it? (laughs) That's really good. (laughs) (laughs) It has nice spices to it. Um, It has good texture. It has... (laughs) There you go. That texture Does it encourage you to want to make it yourself? No. <laughs> okay. It is the easiest <laughs> recipe. We will give you the recipe after this podcast. You can find can it. I just keep eating this? Yep. Harrison On the link below. Yeah, take me off the camera. The link below. There you go. Um, it is um, super easy to make <laughs> and <laughs> it's super delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, so there you have it. Gonna be so now, scary. Uh, now you know. I mean, that cold. Even if it's cold after this, it's I mean, yours. It's, yours oh, to have. It's. It is. Um, I had to bring you my frozen batch. Be nice. So because obviously I didn't have time to make it since I was doing appointments during the day today. So I brought yeah. you my frozen batch and then heated that up. It's delicious. Yeah, you Thank you. Busy. So it uh, may not be quite as good as when it's fresh right out of the pan, but it's still really good. I'm very happy. If right you're now. used to ragu sauce, that's going to taste amazing. <laughs> you know what would be great, Abby? A little ragu on top. <laughs> I don't I'm just get kidding. Into this. <laughs> I feel like she's trying to start a fight now. <laughs> but it I'm just kidding. It's great on its own. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so we're on to yes. case collections. Mm. Yep. Uh, we yeah. sure are, aren't we? Yep. Everyone's really prepared, right? So hit me. I did Amber. kind of think about it. Yes. Um, I don't think that it's like super interesting for a lot of people, but we did have that like puppy yesterday that came in with the needle and her That's mouth. very yeah. interesting. Yeah, it actually, is. How did that go? I missed that. I saw um, it on the schedule. Wait, you got to start from the beginning for all the okay. listeners. Oh, yeah. So um, this four-month-old puppy, she got into a sewing kit um, and ended up with a needle stuck in like her soft palate <gasps> underneath her tongue. Um, she's totally fine when she came in. Like she's just a happy puppy. Um, but we couldn't really look at it, so we sedated her. And Dr. King just pulled it right out very gently. And that was that. <laughs> that was that. Nice. It went right through. You know, it avoided the, mm. the you know, where the mandible comes together, the surface yeah. is there. It was like back So a was it bit. through underneath yeah. here? Well, you could feel it there. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So it just hadn't poked out, but it was still yeah. poking out in her mouth. Ooh. I was like, I don't know how she didn't. It must have been able to move enough that it didn't bother her tongue yeah Mm -hmm. um and um it came out it was perfect you could just reuse that sucker (laughs) put it back in the sewing kit get started which we did not do we didn't do (laughs) i mean that's very good of the owner to catch it that quickly yes if it's not that easy to see it then well we have some horror stories of needle migration Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and i think that's the most interesting part about like the needles when people call and say oh my dog ate a needle because like porcupine yeah. quills, they do migrate. <gasps> That's my yeah. case. I'm going to share. <gasps> Ooh. But wait, with the needle and the soft pellet, like what, how do you, what do you do next? Like is there treatments afterwards? You mean once we took it out? Yeah. Nah, I just take it out. It's good. And it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll check on you later. I mean, it was, it was just there. Weird. I mean, yeah. it was only there for an hour mm-hmm. or two. You know, it wasn't there for like an extended period of time That's where it could cool. form like an abscess or anything like that. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. So Amber mentioned the porcupine quills. Um, our friend, Dr. Jody Hubner, who's a veterinarian mm-hmm. yeah. who works for Zoetis, she has a German short hair pointer that goes hunting and they were up in Michigan and her husband um, took her hunting and she found a dead porcupine and decided to chew on it, which is not good. Not good. Nope. Because porcupine quills get stuck in the dog's mouth or if they run up on a porcupine, then they shoot their quills and then they get stuck all over the dog. Oof. The problem is they can migrate. So they can burrow under the skin and then go places. So this dog, they went to the emergency clinic. Um, Mitch took her to the emergency clinic and they thought they got everything out, but they weren't sure because she was chewing on the porcupine. So the thought was she might have swallowed one. And so she was um, petting her one day, Jody was, and she found that she had a big swelling on her side. And so then we ultrasounded that and – it, it had the classic presentation for like a porcupine under the skin. So then we were like, all right, let's just go ahead and take her to surgery and take that out. And then spare. She's going to be asleep mm-hmm. anyway. But, oh, while you're in there, can you just look at the rest of her abdomen? And so we spayed her. And then I looked at the rest of her abdomen like, I'm not going to find anything or whatever. And there was one that had burrowed into the wall of the stomach. What? And one in her mesentery. And then she had the one on the outside of her chest wall. 
And so we got them all out. So interesting. I don't know if there's any more. There could be. So you can't tell for sure. Out of the stomach wall. It was burrowed. It was like a granuloma, like through the stomach, like in the layers of the stomach wall. Yeah. Were they big, little? Like how big were they? Um, the one in her side was pretty small. Like had probably disintegrated and was broken apart. Yeah. Um, the one in her stomach, same size, and then the one in her mesentery was a little bit bigger, but not much. So interesting. Good thing you found them. Yeah. Could have been a. Yep. Real. B- <laughs> she's like she knows that there, there could be more there that we didn't see, right? You yeah. Know, or whatever. But yeah, she's recovered fine and doing well. Good. So. Very interesting because it we don't see them. I mean, we don't have very many dogs coming upon porcupines here in central Indiana. No. Right, yeah. So, but yeah, up there in Michigan, apparently. Those Michiganders better watch out. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, those porcupines. Not good for anything. <laughs> nope. They're kind of cute. They are very cute. Maybe in a, a weird way. Yeah. They're a bigger version of a hedgehog. Yeah, right? Right? Yeah. I don't know. Or is uh, a hedgehog more like a Hamster. He- oh, uh, <laughs> hedgehogs are. <laughs> we'll look up the origin. <laughs> hedgehogs are. Uh, I'm not going to say. Because you think it's. No, because I'll be wrong or yeah. something. Yeah. She's like, I can't fact check this right now. Yeah, <laughs> I can't fact check this. <laughs> um, so what else? Who else has a cool case? Anybody else? I was trying to think of something, though. I'm blanking out of all these cool cases. I mean, I have one that I was thinking literally of our zebra board. So I was like, okay, what what things have I seen? There was one where it was a – problem is I don't remember. She was an old dog. She was not spayed. I think she had puppies in her life. I don't remember. Anyway, it was a while ago, and she came in because there was um, – what was wor- we were worried about a vulva prolapse. So the vagina had prolapsed out, and um, – but we're quite sure was it a mass? Was it something else? It was an older kiddo. Mm-hmm. So she came in and kind of long story short on like evaluation and palpation of that area. It actually was ended up being a, her uterine horn. So an over like the the female reproductive system in a dog is you've got your two ovaries and it comes to a Y down here. And these are the horns. And so for her, one of those horns had come all the way down and prolapsed out of her vagina. And so um, and <laughs> vulva or whatever. Day. Yeah, it's <laughs> bad. Doesn't feel good, I would assume. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> have that happen to me. <laughs> um, so what you're supposed to do is you know, put it back and then try to essentially zipper it with suture Mm -hmm. so that it stays put, just kind of tuck it up in there and see if, you know, how it goes. Like we didn't know for sure, but the way it palpated, it felt like it was a horn. Unfortunately, the suture didn't last. And so it did come back out. And it's one of those things where you got to remove it surgically or else it's going to keep falling out and, or it's going to become necrotic and, uh, just die because it's exposed to where it shouldn't be exposed. And she did, um, based off her age and everything else going on, we did, um, humanely euthanize her, but it was a very interesting case. Cause looking yeah. at it, you're like, what is that yeah. and without feeling it? And still even feeling you're like, I think that's where it's going. Right. But it's one of those situations where it was like surgery or yeah, not. Yeah. So but it was interesting. Yep. That is a very interesting since, case. That leads nicely into oh. our client question. Mm, client Speaking question. of the female reproductive tract. Yes. <laughs> I hope that was related. That, was, <laughs> that would have been really weird. <laughs> so what is your opinion on when a female dog should be spayed? From Chris Grissom. Thank you, Chris. Good question. I think there's usually a variety of factors that go into that, right? Like yes. age, size. Yep. I Breed. trust my Breed. doctor, Dr. Kristen Pulse. <laughs> yeah. I hope you trust us too. <laughs> yeah, I trust you. I trust you. She's my favorite. Oh, gosh. We understand. There's a bond. But yeah, there is. There's weird factors. I think each mm-hmm. case is dependent on the dog. Yep. Mm-hmm. I always, literally, when I start the conversation, I start by asking, do you want to go through a heat cycle or not? Yes. Because some people want to for various reasons, whether they're considering breeding, whether they are more comfortable mm-hmm. doing that with their dog because they've had the breed before. And yeah. there's so many different reasons. Anatomically, sometimes it's better. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But anyway, so I start with that question and it's either a very much yes or very much, I don't know, what do you think? And then we go from there. So, or I'm sorry, very much no, I said that wrong. <laughs> a very much no, I absolutely do not want to deal with that versus what do you think about it? There's very few that say absolutely yes, I have my decision made yeah. up. So we kind of talk through the case and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, I think it really depends. I mean, there's percentages for both sides of it, right? Like you don't spam, them, they're more at risk for developing mammary cancer. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't spam them at all, gosh, get into a laundry list of yeah. issues that we've and seen. diseases. Absolutely. I mean, especially this year, I feel like mm -hmm. it's like we've seen everything Yep, that you don't see that often. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. because the sheer number of cases that mm -hmm. we're seeing, but Yep. I mean, pyometros, which is like a uterine infection or yep. mm -hmm. uh, ovarian cysts. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, not usually in young dogs, but you're looking at ovarian tumors, you're looking at I mean, vocal pyometros. <laughs> vocal pyometros. <laughs> uh, yep. I mean, you can get into weird stuff like pseudo pregnancies, um, if they go through heat cycles, which means the body thinks they got pregnant. And so they start developing mammary tissue and it's all hormone based oh, and they really didn't get pregnant. So do they have a that heat cycle like an unspayed dog? Do they have a heat cycle like throughout their lifetime or does it eventually mm -hmm. end? That's a great question. It, do, I mean, they do. They typically have a heat cycle every six months or you think of like, you know, seasonal. So winter, summer, winter, mm -hmm. summer or something like that, you know, kind of a thing. But at some point in their age, they will st typically they're going to stop having a heat cycle. Right. But a lot of times that's where we end up seeing some of the issues associated mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. still having or still being intact. Yep, so we're, like uterine infections, that's just the most common thing, I would say. Mammary cancer, just because. Mm -hmm. Doesn't they're that intact. In the risk increase with each heat cycle that they have too for memory up to sure. the third heat cycle. Yeah, yeah. So like, I think it's like you can decrease the chance of memory cancer if you spay them before right. their first heat cycle to like less than one percent. If it's between the first and second heat cycle, I think you can decrease it to less than ten percent. After the third heat cycle, there's no difference. Yeah, I think is what the research shows. Mm -hmm. But then, you know? as they age, they get more prone to pyometra and. Mm -hmm. Mucometra, hydrometra. So basically the uterus fills up with any type of fluid. And mm -hmm. pyometra, though, is the emergency. Yes. Yeah. It's very bad. And you have to spam anyway to fix it. Yep. That's yeah. literally the treatment. So wow. yeah. Yep. So I do think there's some um thought behind, you know, I think when we look at how early some of these animals are spayed or neutered, you know, castrated basically. I mean, I think they're the the places that are doing it. Early, early, like six weeks, eight mm. weeks, whatever. Yeah. You know, they have different objectives, you know, so a humane society right. or a low cost. I mean, you know, their objective is to sterilize as many animals as possible so they can decrease the amount of the population or the pet right. population that can reproduce. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, they're accomplishing their objective. I think out in practice, anecdotally, we probably see or form the opinion that it might be better to wait a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, to spay yeah. and neuter them because I feel like we see a lot of – potentially other problems associated with really, really early yeah. spaying and neutering. Yep. Um, I think you it can be, I think you can spay and neuter them safely mm -hmm. very early. I don't yeah. think, you know, after a certain point, I think you can definitely do it safely, but I don't know if it's always in their best interest from a longevity standpoint on the problems that you manage. So I think we kind of, yeah. like you guys were saying, try and walk that line mm -hmm. that, you know, of, okay, it's a giant breed dog. Okay, we might do this. Okay, it's a Maltese. We might do this, you know, right. kind of a thing. Um, and trying to walk that line to get as much benefit as we can, leaving the animal intact for as long as we can, but yet mm -hmm. spaying them prior to the first heat cycle to take advantage of them being spayed prior to their first heat cycle. Right. But I think it's important to remember there's no blanket statement. I think right. that sometimes it can get confused. Like you definitely need to do it by this date and that's mm -hmm. it. And it's just so variable for, like you said, large breed dogs, like they grow up until almost two years of age sometimes, right. extra mm -hmm. large yeah. breed. So it's like, yeah. you're not going to neuter or spay or whatever the same time frame. And yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think as a general whole at the clinic here, we've said like safely for anesthesia and everything comfortably six months for them to handle that full blown mm -hmm. surgery procedure. Mm -hmm. But Again, we're talking more, at least in my experience, females in that six months time period because male dogs, you don't have to worry about a heat cycle. So you can yeah. kind of have the luxury of waiting even longer after that too yeah, for right. development. So, yeah. yep. 
What do you see in rooms? What do people um, ask about or talk about in rooms? In Whoa, room? <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Ooh, share it. And related to spaying and neutering, do they oh. always want to know? <laughs> do they like, always oh, want to know? Stories. Do they always want to know about? <laughs> Tell us all the secrets <laughs> of the room, <laughs> the room of the side. room life. <laughs> um, what are they? Do they already have sometimes some opinions about? Oh shoot! Yeah. I thought I was going to have to spay them, or oh, I thought you know. Yeah, what do you hear when you're in the rooms? Interesting. I um. I know, especially like on our last puppy visits, we always like them to leave either like scheduling a spay or um, doing something like that. But I, I don't get very many questions, honestly, about mm-hmm. spay and neutering. Um, yeah. That's I think weird. there's so, we don't have, I mean, like the population of people that breed dogs is so right small. I feel like this year is yeah. the first time we've seen a larger population of clients with pets that aren't that are intact. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know, and so um, we've seen some of these diseases that we historically wouldn't see as often just because the population that we're treating has shifted just slightly. Yep. yep. But yeah, I mean, I think most people just assume they're going to be, yeah. you know, neutering and spaying their pet. I just feel like that's kind of like the process. As quickly as, yeah. 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 So. And that's okay. Like it's not, I think at least we're all open and honest. Like if we have a different opinion of maybe waiting a little longer or doing it sooner, mm-hmm. like yeah. mm-hmm. just kind of talk through it. But I mean, it's always a very interesting topic to me because there's, if we like look up on, so Vin is our veterinary resource oh, to I like, uh, yeah, basically vet Facebook. <laughs> yeah. It's like an information network. Yeah. yeah information mm-hmm. network. And so, gosh, I've looked into it before. And I'm sure you have too, of just seeing what the general like new opinion is out there. Mm-hmm. And there's so many, like there's literally, there's no right or wrong answer. It's whatever's right for the family. It's Has so it fascinating been like to that me. For you guys, like as doctors, Has like it always the been varying like, opinion. Yeah, like it's always everybody has their own opinion about it. I think so because I think yeah. some of what your your opinion gets formed, you know, in, in, ends up being biased over time based on what you're seeing. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, yeah. so just like that happens sometimes with breeders where they're like. Hey, we're never going to give another dog a lepto vaccine, mm. you know, because oh, every dog's had a vaccine, you know, and, and so then yeah. they form this bias against the lepto vaccine. Yeah. Um, same thing happens with us, you know, when we're working and, you know, um, we spay every dog before, you know, it's like, well, the best thing to do is spay and we never see any problems when they're, sp- you know what I mean? You start forming mm-hmm. biases. Yeah. So I think that's where some of the opinions, and again, some of that's anecdotal, just what you're living with and doing on a daily basis. So people in different parts of the country are going to have different opinions, you know, in terms of what they're doing and what they're seeing. There's really no research, you know, to say, okay, if I leave a dog, a male dog, and he's intact, and I leave him intact until the age of two, I'm going to see less cruciate disease, for example. Yeah. But yet out in practice, I can tell you that the dogs that are neutered later in life have a tendency to have less orthopedic issues if they're a large breed dog. So that's a bias that I'm forming in my brain. I have no peer-reviewed paper (laughs) to tell me that. It's just anecdotal. It's just me making an opinion based on what I'm seeing on a daily basis. Um, And so I think, you know, that's where some of those opinions come from probably is just people working and living and – sharing what they see that's like 99 percent of yeah them, i feel like becoming i don't know it's just because there's no Being. real they're so focused the industry is so focused on um not having reproduction like as far as like out of hand like you don't want just like a huge right. population of pets that you have no homes for right. they i don't think that it would serve any purpose or they don't feel like it would serve any purpose to do any type of research study trying to convince people to leave dogs intact longer. Yeah. I think that would go against what they're trying to accomplish probably. Right. Wouldn't you think? I no, mean, I agree. I think it, I mean, gosh, you, we heard and hear all about like rescues getting overpopulated. And right. of course there's the no kill and the kill shelters that are out there. And so it's just, I think that, that information to me helps me support like, let's, let's get them. Let's get them fixed. Like Mm -hmm. you don't, if you're not really going to have any intention of breeding and if you do, okay, let's talk about why you want to do that. You know, Mm -hmm. and it's just, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I don't think they would ever put together anything that would push a narrative. Yeah. Other than that. Right. You know, to suggest to, to try and get people to not 
spay or neuter their dog until right. a certain time period. That would just that would go against their narrative. So I don't think that's why we don't. I don't think I have any research right. necessarily that right. points us to that direction. It's just kind of what we see. Yeah, you know. But and I, I think it's so different. It's oh just, yeah, you just never know. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. It's cool. Yep. But it's that's cool. you know when you're working with that many breeds. Mm-hmm. You know, they're all the same, but they're all different. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's Just very like fascinating. Oh. Just like us. <laughs> so We're all unique in our own way. <laughs> yeah, grab that Alfredo, girl. Heck yeah. So <laughs> it's going to be cold. You'll have to heat it up I'm again. It's way better than a salad at 10 p.m. I'm so excited. Oh, good. I'm yes. glad you're excited. You eat so salad at 10, 10 p.m. p.m. That was very special. That was episode... <laughs> Abby, you got to watch our podcast, then you'll know what we're talking about. We often talk about food. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to catch up all to like five so episodes episode. now. Episode. We talk about food once an episode. At least. It's got to be because more. we're at the end of the day and we're starving. Yep. yep. But Harrison told us we couldn't eat on the podcast. Yeah. Why so, does it make a weird mouth sound in the... <laughs> Harrison, is that yeah. right? Yep. That's what he said. And he's like, nope, no eating I allowed. I myself as I chew that. So. I'm like, I'll be putting that down. Yeah, Listeners <laughs> really like that, though. They like the background noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Anybody else have anything to add in regards to that question? Great question. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, mm-hmm. Chris. Thanks. Yeah. Always welcome questions. Yep. Can't wait for the next one. Woo! Woo! Never know what we're getting into. <laughs> okay, well, we will wrap it up there okay. for this week's mm-hmm. episode of yep. the Veterinary Roundtable. We did it. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. And remember, send in those questions and be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at All Star Veterinary Clinic. If you enjoyed the episode or a previous episode, leave us a review um, on your podcast provider of choice. Yes. We'll see you next week. Few weeks. Few weeks. Few weeks. Not next week. Few weeks. With the next question and the next set of icebreakers. And the next fun time. And our next next commentary. I would love to come back. (gasps) Oh. Oh. You're putting that out there. Oh, yeah. This was fun. fun. There we go. They're going to chini Alfredo. Uh, (laughs) Oh, now they're going to expect a meal every time. Good job. Oh, no, I'm good without the meal. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time (laughs) on the Veterinary Roundtable. (laughs) 